Hey guys, Derek Best, Beacon Fight for Life. Um, I'm here today with Salem and Melissa Domiati. Got it? Perfect. 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 They're from the Longevity Lab and they embarked on a worldwide journey in 2020, researching, interviewing, learning from the experts in longevity, implementing many biohacking techniques and protocols on themselves. As a result, they are now physically healthier and their biological ages are reversing. Welcome, guys. Thank you for having us, Derek. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Derek. We're standing like this because of technology consequences. <laughs> so, um, as you guys might know, uh, at the Beacon Fight for Life, we like to provide techniques to the community um, to preserve life and reduce the number of people taking their own life globally. Now, you guys have got a glowing... What's the word I would use? Can you use the, the word... Pedigree? Is that is that the, <laughs> like a dog? <laughs> well, I don't, I don't mean it like a dog, but you've got a glowing with the research, experience, and, and study, experience, put yeah. a lot of research. Yeah, into so it. a lot of research. There's so much research you guys have done about longevity and you know people living longer. I think there's a real, it's it's really relevant with the, the subject of suicide because you know if you think about people that are wanting to end their life, you know they don't see a hope, they don't see a future. Mm. Where you guys help create the path, yes, and the maps. For that, so I see it as an instrument, instrument is instrumental and relevant to the subject of suicide. Um, Salem, you help people improve their biological age to and to live better for longer because of your degrees in physiotherapy, sports science, as well as studying functional medicine and yoga. Do you have time for yourself? Well, that's it. Yeah, this is my life. I enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> Can you give me some examples of what you do and how it works? Okay, so people come to us uh, from ages of approximately 30 to over 85. Okay. To 86 is our oldest person so far. Okay. And we work with them by finding what they want their future self to look like. So mm -hmm. we take people on a journey to their final birthday mm -hmm. and imagine what that's like. And, and I'm not sure, you know, what age you might like to be on your final birthday, but we help people work that out. Yep. And then we look at what they're like now, physically, mentally, socially, mm -hmm. emotionally, all of those things. We look at their blood tests, we look at their flexibility, we look at their balance, and then we try to connect their future self with their current self and draw a roadmap, a bit like Google, where you put the end destination in, but Google needs to know where you are currently. Mm -hmm. And then we help to give people that plan for their longevity. I like the example because I've seen you guys talk on it and I like the example you used about, and I think the gentleman said he wanted to live to 95. Yes. And then somewhere along the line you said, well, can you, how do you go tying your shoelaces? Is, is that an example? <laughs> That's right. So if you're able to still do your own shoelaces, self-dress, live at home, mm. well, you need to have even better function now at, say, 50 than you're going to need at 95 mm. so you can actually maintain that and not just hope. We, all, we don't want to wish we have this. We want to know what we want and plan for it. Excellent. And make those changes now that are going to make the difference mm. in the future. I wear slides now because of that. <laughs> <laughs> because of that. Um, Melissa, you're an author, an yes. educator, and you share for your lived experiences with a goal to empower people, not only women, but people, to live healthier and a balanced lifestyle. Yes, that is true. It's a very important thing to balance stress and consider your own mental health journey. Mm -hmm. I have struggled with mental health over my years. Mm -hmm. I've found that connection with people has made a, a huge difference and having a purpose and realizing for me, realizing how precious life is. Yeah. And I've had a near death experience and come through that in a way that I had to learn to walk again. And I had a year basically being stuck at home by myself. That mm. was a very, very tough mental health journey mm. and it was the small steps that helped yep. me get through it so making growing muscle i was literally a bag of bones so yep. and after that journey finding out that you know life is worth living and for me having purpose and community and connection was a very important part of that so you've been at both spectrums where you've had you know been healthy then not been healthy and now you're back to even Absolutely. reversing your yes. age yes much healthier now than i have ever been and what was the first first key, the first step that you took? For someone that's out there listening, what, 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 what would you suggest that they could, you know, if they, they're feeling cloudy, they're feeling lost, they're feeling all these emotions, mm. what was, because you were feeling all that. 
Absolutely. Yeah? What was the first step that you took? Do you remember? For me, it's always been writing. Mm-hmm. So poetry is um, one of one of my passions. And being not being able to walk, not being able to move, I could still think. I could still ponder life. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the reflections from my poetry journey have, have come together in my book. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, being able to, to visualise and imagine a better life and hope and wish and dream that mm-hmm. my, um, my life would be different. And yep. it's changed a lot and it's been amazing. Yeah, well, thank you for sharing that. Um, <clears throat> you also interview people over 90. Yes, I do. You, go, you get, travel around and do that. Absolutely, yeah. Travelling all over the world. Yeah. It's been an amazing journey. Yeah. I've met um, I met a gentleman that you introduced me to, Jack. Jack. Yeah, Jack's incredible. He is great. And um, one of Jack's secrets is that he gets out of the house every day. He lives alone. Mm. When I was there, he was baking dinner that night for the Lions Club. Yep. So, you know, 97 and he was moving around in the kitchen and just putting on the roast. And he and still drives. He still drives, yeah. Ev- but every day, regardless of how he feels, he leaves the house. Yeah. So he just goes to the supermarket, walks around, doesn't buy anything, says hello to people. Mm-hmm. That I find um, one of the most important things. And serving others. Mm-hmm. So some of the people that we've met in the Philippines, for example, uh, there was a lady there, who, Dr. D, she's 95, yep. and she's still a consulting psychologist. Wow. So she's helping people every day. Is there a common theme? You know, because you, how many interviews have you done, or you know, you've done multiple interviews. So, is there a common theme that you know that is consistent with longevity, or is it? Yes, there there is obviously the movement and the food that they eat. They're not eating junk food, mm. but it is very much around having a sense of purpose. So, being able to to think about some reason to get out of bed in the morning, mm-hmm. and looking at things uh, very much around making sure that they have something to do, someone to do it with, but most importantly, someone to do it for. Mm. So it's that element of service I have found. I thought it was gratitude. I think gratitude is a huge part. Mm. But after interviewing probably the first 10 or 12, I was I was sure it was gratitude. That was the most important thing. They're mm. very grateful people. Mm. And they are, but it is the, um, the serving and helping others. Like Jenny, our um, mm. old neighbour. Jenny's just turned 91. Yep. She's always doing something for someone. She's always um, giving someone flowers. Or so it's not of, about working for money as a purpose. It's actually mm-hmm. having a purpose. So whether you're coaching, mentoring somebody whether you're making food for somebody else, mm. whether you're helping walk somebody else's dog who can't, it's feeling the, the gift is in the giving. It's yep. giving and helping and having Absolutely. a reason to get I 100% believe that, yeah. Yes, yeah. so if you're feeling really bad yourself, going and doing something to help someone else gives you that, mm. that lift, which, mm. is, which is why I love teaching. Excellent, thank you. Um, Salem, you run workshops both locally and around, around the world. Who's your ideal client? Well, for when Melissa and I have run the workshops together, yep, and we we love doing that for anybody. So we do it for companies, we do it for councils, uh, we do it for clubs, mm-hmm. anyone that's got you know over thirty or forty people. We've done a couple for a bank mm-hmm. uh, recently here in Perth, and anyone who wants to learn about longevity, so they get a small taster when it's in a group setting. Mm. What I love doing the most is. Oh, I never Yep. So the people I love helping the most is when I work one-on-one with people. And, and I find I help to take them through that journey of imagining their final birthday, what they're like now, and then working with those steps with them to get them to achieve their ultimate goal. So anyone who wants to live well for longer, rather than decaying slowly from 50 to 75 and then going, I want people to live really, really well at their maximum capacity and strength and vitality and happiness mm. right until the end and then suddenly go rather than slowly tapering off in the last 20 years or losing their memory or losing the spinal function or mm. not being able to walk properly so i want to help people stay as well in all of their internal organs and their physical strength as well mm. so you said your demic the, the the ideal client's age is eight, the oldest you've got is 87 Yes, 86 is our current oldest, but someone's welcome to break that record. <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've you know, spoken to a lot of people over 90 through Melissa, mm. 
but they've already they're already doing the things we want to teach people mm -hmm. so those people have already you know cracked the secrets and they're living a great life because they got there mm -hmm. so once you hit 90 you're much more likely to hit 100 it's, mm -hmm. it's getting there is the hardest part yeah the we're happy to work with people under 30 but we look at our kids for example you know when you're 18 or 20 you think you're invincible you mm. don't you're not thinking about alzheimer's mm. you're not thinking about heart attacks mm. or strokes you're not thinking about autoimmune disease or cancer yeah whereas when people start getting to 30 and they start seeing their parents potentially their friends going through those things that's when they start reflecting on their own mortality mm -hmm. and that's when they think oh what can i do to not that and not get those things because they all of those things are related they're called the diseases of aging okay. so when you're helping one of prevent uh, for example diabetes you're also at the same time helping to prevent against alzheimer's or dementia or heart disease mm. they're all connected as diseases of aging so what we want to do is delay those diseases from inflicting you and having effects on you for as long as possible and you can start as early as you want the sooner you start the better yeah. absolutely um, how can guys? How can people get hold of you guys? We well, can if, if they are in Perth. We're in the uh, Perth train station. Uh, the, our website's thelongevitylab.com.au. Mm -hmm. They can contact you, and you can uh, let us know. Let them know where we are. Yep. Uh, we uh, also are active on LinkedIn and, yes, and Facebook. Facebook. Yes. Uh, if Instagram. Yep. There's some stories on Instagram. I've been sharing a few on Insta and Facebook. Mm -hmm. One recently was a lady who is 95 she just got engaged she's wow. wrapping her wedding gown <laughs> amazing woman and yeah so there there are some inspirational stories just snippets of the stories from the book which wow. is so you've got a book is it is it published and it's out the flowers from the farm which is my poetry book which mm -hmm. goes through my mental health struggles and finding love and it's a it's a journey of my life that There's a bit of a now. glimmer there when you said finding <laughs> love. A few poems about me, so it makes me cry. Yes, definitely. So that is out now um, yeah. in, in bookshops and, and on Amazon. But the Longevity Lab book is still under research, so we're... We're, we're still interviewing a few more people still before it's yes. publishable. Yeah. yeah, hopefully I won't... Well, well I won't make that, that cut. Because if you, well, you will, but not yeah. for a while. Yeah. yeah, we'd like you to be in the in the in the fiftieth edition of the book. Absolutely, yes, excellent. Because the plan is to continue on interviewing and learning and growing. Because mm. you know things are changing on a regular basis. You know, technology is upgrading. There's new supplements out every day. Mm -hmm. There's there's new discoveries and techniques. So what we're finding is what people have done so far. But potentially the people that we interview in a year or two or in five years. So there'll be multiple different versions of this book. So if people know someone over 90 who's healthy physically and mentally, please send them to Melissa mm -hmm. and uh, she'd love to chat with them. If they're outside of Perth, we'll either travel and run a workshop in that country or we can do it via Teams or Zoom or something like Absolutely. that. Absolutely, there's amazing people and I love sharing stories. I love giving people a voice. That is, is something that is one of my life purposes. Okay, so if you could give the audience just one last thing about, you know, just one tip. If they're not going to do anything beyond here, what's one thing that they can think about? Move every day. Mm -hmm. So go for a little walk, get a bit of sunshine outside, you know, touch a, touch a tree or walk barefoot on the sand or on the grass, be in touch with nature. And if you can do that with a friend, mm -hmm. you are doubling your reward on investment. Excellent. And for me, I would say join a community group like uh, City Farm Writers Group is an amazing collection of people. We get together once a week, we write, and we share vulnerably. We are very authentic in our words, mm -hmm. and it is it is wonderful to be able to hear other people's stories and know that you're not alone, that there are other people. Not yeah. everyone is is as well as they appear on the surface. So it Especially is important. Especially on socials. Oh, absolutely. Social media is, is terrible for that. Yeah. yeah. But we but call it another, fake book. We that's put another, our best face out there. That's but. another conversation, I'm sure. Yes. Well, and the Longevity Lab is our passion. We, we love helping people. Mm. So, so when we go through a lot of what we do is because we love to help. So it's our passion project. Yes, we do get paid for it. But mm. for us, it's, it's a passion that we live. So I, if, you, if there's someone out there you can help, I would encourage you to do that. And if you like help, ours or somebody else, find a friend, find a psychologist, Ask them to guide you through what your future vision could look like because then your future will help to pull your present self to become 
that future vision that you created for yourself. Wow. On that note, thank you so much, guys. Really appreciate you thank coming you. and speaking Thanks to for having us, Derek. And uh, Derek Best, Beacon Fight for Life. Make sure you take the time to smile today. See you later, guys. Bye. Bye.